Uh, open your Bibles, please, to Luke's Gospel, chapter number four. Luke's Gospel, chapter number four. And we're going to begin reading at verse number one. Luke's Gospel, chapter four, verse one. And I'm reading from a New King James Version. It says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward when, he, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Verse 4 again, But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I want to talk to you from this subject you need the word. Amen. Look at somebody tell them, you need the word. Need the word. Now notice what I did not say. I didn't say you need a word. I said you need the word. A lot of times we go, especially in modern day circles, and we look for a prophetic word. Again, I'm not against prophecies or anything like that. Thank God that, there, that, that, uh, that gift is in the body of Christ. Thank God for it. But even prophecy needs to be filtered through the word the written word of God. And so we need the word. Look at somebody and tell them, you need the word. It is said that the famous missionary, Dr. David Livingstone, uh, started his trek across Africa. When he started, he had about 73 books in packs, in three packs, and, the, and it weighed about 180 pounds. Needless to say, as he's going along, he began to offload and offload and offload because it began to be very, very heavy. He ended up with one book, and that was the Bible. Let's look at why we need the Word of God. When we look at this particular text, we see that this is after Jesus' baptism. Uh, he was baptized by John the Baptist. And then it says he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And the devil said, if you are the Son of God, he began to mess with his identity, question it. If you are the Son of God, cause, command these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, it's written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So the first thing I want to tell you is this. The word of God is what we live by. Again, say that with me. The word of God is what we live by. Now, I want you to hear this. The word of God is what we live by. He was quoting uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, number 8, verse 3. The word is what we live by. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Your body feeds on natural food, but your spirit feeds on the Word of God. Just like your body has to be nourished with natural food, your spirit got to have the Word. And a lot of us are walking around malnourished. We're depleted spiritually, and we wonder, what's going on? You ain't had no word. Come on, I need the word. Yeah, and so I, we all need the word of God. It's what we live by. It's what we run everything through, the filter of the word. If life asks me a question, I need to answer it through the filter of the word. Whatever is going on, I need the Word of God. The late Kenneth Hagin said this. He said that we feed our bodies three hot meals a day and our spirit two cold snacks a week. If the only time you're getting the Word is when you come to church, I'm grateful that you're coming, but that's not enough. 
You, you have to have it daily. And so there has to be a constant intake of the Word of God because it is what we live by. Another thing we see is this, that the Word of God is not only what we live by, but the Word of God is a weapon. It's a weapon. Here was Jesus being tempted by the devil, and he didn't use his own power per se. He picked up the Word of God. He said in verse number four, it is written. Notice, he didn't say, I feel, I think, I say unto you. He said, it is it's written. It's written. Notice, looking at verse number five. Then the devil taking him up on a high mountain, showing him all the kingdoms of, this, of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory for this has been delivered to me and I'll give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Jesus answered and said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written. Shout it out. You need to get some it is written in your life. Because he said, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and on him uh, and him only shall you serve. So understand, it is written. Let's keep going. Then he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Now here goes the devil. The devil started talking. For it is written. That joker, I tell you what. He says, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear, they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. Stop. Look at me. Look at me. The devil knows the word. Yeah, he does. He knows the word. Don't be fooled. He knows the word. He probably knows it better than you do. But the issue is he is the father of lies. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. And so we have to get to the place where we recognize if he said it, he's lying. One translation says about the devil that when he lies, he's speaking his native tongue. So anything he's telling you, he's lying about it. And so he'll use scripture, but he'll begin to twist it, misrepresent it. That's why you and I have to rightly divide, rightly understand the word of God. And he said, Jesus answered and said, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. It has been said, same thing as said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. The Word of God was the weapon of choice that Jesus used to defeat the enemy in his time of temptation. Hear me. You can't wait until you're tempted to try to get the ammunition to defeat the enemy. You know, it's, oh, God, uh, whoo. And the thing is, he's going to tempt you in an area that you are temptable. <laughs> so it's no use in, you know, well, you know what? <sighs> oh, uh, no, no, no. I got to go ahead and get prepared ahead of time with the Word of God. Jot this scripture down, Ephesians chapter number 6, when Paul, verse number 17, when Paul makes this description of, he's talking about the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6, 17, he said, and take the helmet of salvation, notice, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So he likens that sword, that the Word of God, to the sword of the Spirit, so it's a weapon. What I envision is this, what I think about is here you are and you, you and I are being bombarded daily with the enemy's prognosis, the enemy's voice. And here we are with the sword just laying there. Look at somebody say, pick up the sword. So if he tells you, you know what, those needs are never going to be met. What's the word? My God. 
shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know what? You're not going to win. Oh, thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. You, you, uh, 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 you have to understand. You, 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 you are nobody. Oh, wait a minute. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Hear me. He doesn't care about what you feel, what you think, your, the latest opinion. He, he has to respond to the Word of God. Use it as a weapon. Give yourself a test even this week. Notice if you are saying, I feel. Amen. I feel like, if you preface what you're getting ready to say, I feel like, or I think, because Feeling is the voice of emotion. Thinking is the voice of reason. But when you say, I believe, that's the voice of your spirit. Because with the heart, man believes. So if you, I, I pay attention when I'm hearing somebody say, you know what? I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like. Oh, I think, I think, I think it's nothing wrong with feeling, nothing wrong with thinking, but they have to fall under the Word of God, what you really believe. Amen? Ooh, it's good stuff. All right. All right. So now, let's turn to Hebrews chapter number four. And this time we want to look at verse number 12, and we want to see what that has to say what that has to say about the Word of God, what the writer of Hebrews has to say. Hebrews 4 and 12 says this, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the faults and intents of the heart. Let's look at that same verse in the message. Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, the message. Hebrews 4.12 in the message says this. God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. Nothing and no one is impervious to God's Word. We can't get away from it no matter what. Go ahead, man. I love that. So, so let's, let's look at this. When we look at it as it's listed here in the New King James Version, he says, God's Word is alive. Because he says living. It's alive. It, 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 the, the inference here is it means the quick. Have you ever had your cuticle back and you cut, you know what I'm talking about, you got down to the quick, that's the part that's alive. Now, now, now that, if that's southern, I don't know if that's southern or not. So for you northerners who don't know what I mean by the quick, I'm not speaking of speed. I'm talking about that part that's alive when you, you've gotten it back and you go, ooh, if, 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 you, if, if alcohol should touch it, you know you're alive. You know what I'm talking about? And so he says, God's word is alive. Many would say his word is antiquated, but his word is so alive that whatever he says, that word comes to pass. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You have to understand, when God began to speak, his word is so alive that what he said came to life. Let me further explain. How many of you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? All right, all right, all right. If you haven't, we'll give you an opportunity at the end of this service. Um, but, but hear me, hear me in this. When, that word is so powerful that when you heard it, faith was produced in your heart. And listen to me, you were born again of the incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. Your dead spirit heard the Word, and the Word was so powerful, it caused you to become a new person on the inside. 
Ooh, that word's alive. I'm telling you, you don't realize what transpired. Look at somebody and say, if you could see me on the inside, if you could see me on the inside, if you could see what God has done, you'd be absolutely amazed at how this marvelous word began to do something in your life. This is what I love about it. His word is working in me even when my flesh is going against the very thing. That word so alive that it can cause my thinking to change. That word is so alive, my perspective begins to be changed because it's alive. It's alive. Wow. He not only said, is this word alive, but he said, this word is powerful. It's powerful. It means it's effective in causing something to happen. God, when he speaks, expects what he says to happen irrespective of what things look like. Let me say that again. God, when he speaks, expects things to happen irrespective of what things look like. If it doesn't look like what he said, what he wants, he just says something so it'll look like what he says. It's so powerful, he called you and I who were wretched sinners. And then we came to Christ, he calls you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you know good and well, in terms of your living, you got that on borrowed terms, right? Just keep looking straight. Nobody know I'm looking there. <laughs> Amen. And so that word is powerful. It causes things to happen when he spoke, when he speaks. In fact, you remember Lazarus, dead so much so that they said, by now, let me use the King James, he stinketh. Jesus shows up at the tomb, and he speaks. And he had to call Lazarus' name, or else everybody would got up. The word was so powerful, it went and brought Lazarus' spirit back to his body. He didn't even ask anybody to go get him. That word was so alive, he came out of there. And then he had to tell him, take those grave clothes off that man. Loose that man and let him go. Because the word is alive and the word is powerful. Here's another thing. Notice, it says, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can cut. Everybody do this. Just cut. The word can cut through any lie. Two-edged sword. It cuts through. Because you know, <laughs> when it's amazing how a lie will dress itself up. A lie will put on some of the finest clothes. A lie is waiting to be told. But the word will come and slice that thing to pieces. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And that thing, it pierces. It penetrates. And then it says, even to the division, it divides soul and spirit. And you'll begin to know, is that me or is that God? Was that the pizza last night? Or was that God speaking? Joints and marrow. But I want you to notice something else. The Word of God not only is sharp as a two-edged sword, but the Word of God is a discerner. In other words, the Word of God will cause your level of discernment to heighten so that you'll know, oh, you're lying to me. Or you, oh, that's true. It's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the a heart. Have you had somebody come to you and they had words, but you're sitting there going, 
You, 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 there was something on the inside. There was a guard on the inside. You know, mm, don't trust them. Wave at me if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what happens is the word will heighten your discernment so that you'll know, uh-uh, that sounds good, but uh, hey, something not right about that. And then you even say, something not right about you. <laughs> you know, just keep looking straight. All right. So it's a, it, it'll give you the ability, and discern that means it gives you the ability to judge. I know the phrase, don't judge me. Well, you got to make judgments every day. It's just simply making a decision. You got to make a judgment on something. You, gotta, you judge what you're going to put on today. You made a decision about it. I hope. <laughs> You know, and so you, 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 you get to a place where you make a judgment about a particular thing. And especially, I want to encourage you, if you're making decisions and things like that, the Word of God will help you to make quality decisions. It'll help you to make good decisions so that you're not just going on how you feel, what the latest fad is, just because somebody else is doing it. And this is the thing. Something may have worked for somebody else, but it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So the Word of God is a discerner. And, and, and here's, the, here's, here's the last thing I want to say about this. Uh, everything is sustained by the Word. Hear me. Everything is sustained by the Word. Let's go back a couple of, a couple of chapters. Look at Hebrews 1. And um, this time I want to look right at verse number 3. I know it's the middle of a thought, but I want to just get right to it. Verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 1 says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. That little phrase, he's upholding all things by the word of his power. When God created the world, when God created everything, he spoke. You understand? He spoke. He, he literally spoke, and there was nothing. When he said, light be, light didn't have to have a board meeting. Light just showed up and was because God said it. When he spoke, if you literally, you, you look in Job and other places when it talks about creation, he told the seas where their boundaries would be. And he told them this far and no further by his word. Everything is sustained by the original word that he spoke. His word is still holding it all together right now. And nothing has gone beyond the boundaries of what he laid out. Come on, we serve an awesome God. Wow, wow. When he says that word will sustain you, I want you to hear this. You remember in the New Testament when the disciples were in the boat, they were trying to cross the lake. There was a storm. Here is Jesus coming, walking on the water toward them. And you've heard, you've heard that story, right? Jesus walking on the water. Peter. It's the big mouth. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Well, Jesus said, come. Peter got out of the boat. Now, keep in mind, they are on water. Now, just so you'll know, you can go down to a lake in calm conditions and get out of the boat. And I want to let you know, my dear friends, that thou art going to get wet. You understand? You can even go down to the deep end of the swimming pool 
or even the shallow end and try to practice your water walking. <laughs> but you, when you step out, you're going to encounter something called gravity. And you're going to go right to the bottom. You better know how to swim. When Peter stepped out, he stepped out not on the water. He stepped out on the word. The only thing that was holding Peter was one word from, oh, now. I, if, if, I, if, if I was a hooping preacher, I said, the only thing that was holding Peter was one word from God. Oh, yes, it was. But anyway, I'm not that kind of preacher today. I got other stuff to do. But I'm here to tell you how many of you, God is just waiting on you to step out not on what you feel, not on what you think, but on the Word of God. <laughs> Yay! And I'm telling you, He will make sure that what He says come to pass. He's the only person I know that does something. He literally watches over His Word to make sure that every bit of it comes to pass. Why? God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Y'all like y'all don't know what hooping is? You say, Pastor, you don't normally do that. I know. But I almost feel it today. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What are you saying? There are times that God is waiting on us to simply trust, simply step out on the Word of God. And I'm telling you, He will not disappoint. He will not disappoint. Ladies and gentlemen, we need the Word of God. Are you ready for it? I'm going give, to give you a little hint. One scripture a day does not keep the devil away. You better go in and get in the book and let the book get in you. And what will happen is this. As you get the word on the inside of you, something will begin to change in you. Your mind will start thinking differently. Your actions will begin to be different. There's something about you that will be different. I'm telling you, because the Word is on the inside of you. David said, Thy Word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. It's the only thing going that's going to last. Amen. Get it and let, you, let it take you where you need to go. Come on, give God a praise for his word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, my goal today isn't to make you feel guilty and walk out with condemnation. That's not the goal. I want to challenge you. If you feel convicted, that's another thing. But I want to give you something very practical. I used to be, I, I, since I was been born again, I've been in the Word, but I used to be what I would call a spot reader. If you, would, you look at some of my older Bibles, Fred, you would see certain, certain books of the Bible that I would go to all the time. Nothing wrong with that. You have, everybody have their favorite places that encourage you. But I found that there were other portions that I did not touch. And I thank the Lord for my wife's influence because she, over the years, has been a systematic reader of the Word of God. She would read it from Genesis to Revelation every year. And so I'm smart. And I said, if she's doing that, I'm going to do it too. And so I started, years back, started reading from Genesis to Revelation. Yeah, I would have my devotions, but basically it ends up being about three or four chapters a day. 
of the Word of God. And what will happen is this. You'll begin to get the Word in you. So you're not waiting on what you feel. It's the discipline of the Word of God that you read and you'll begin to see, oh, my mind is changing. My acts are changing. My actions are changing. Why? Because I'm getting the Word. Ladies and gentlemen, we need the Word. Amen. Come and experience transforming worship at New Covenant Christian Ministries. We have two locations. Our West Campus is located at 1760 Phillips Road, Lithonia, Georgia. Our East Campus is located at 14147 Highway 278, Covington, Georgia. For more information, please visit our website at www.newcov.org.